Welcome back to Together Apart. This week is our third session in our new series, and we're gonna begin by thinking about your challenge from last week. The challenge was for you to try and build up the amount of time that you spend talking to God in prayer each day. So how did you get on? Was it easy, hard? Would it be something that you want to try and continue? Do you feel like it did anything to your relationship with God? So even if you did it just once, that's a great way to start. And even if you didn't, it would be great for you to have a think about why you didn't feel able to do it. So now we're going to start with a short video. So you're going to find the link for the video in the description of this one. So go ahead and pause now. Now it's story time, so get comfy and listen. Some people like the Harry Potter books, and then for some people, Harry Potter is a way of life. Not just content with enjoying Rowling's magical epic through the books, play scripts and big budget movies, there are some fans whose devotion runs much deeper. Take, for example, the people who have converted parts of their homes into replica rooms from Hogwarts or the man who regularly takes the tube around London dressed as Severus Snape. There are super fans who have covered themselves in tattoos featuring elements from the stories, who have started wizard rock bands called things like the Serious Black Attack, or have filled their houses with so much memorabilia and merchandise that they can't fit anything useful. For these people, the Harry Potter bug has bitten hard. Harry is almost certainly the centre of their wizarding world. So there's a fandom stage just back from these obsessive devotees and it has a lot of worldwide members. Harry Potter is one of the most loved cultural icons in the world, even though the final book arrived in 2007 and the last film came out nearly a decade ago. While they might not be at the stage where they christen their children Hermione and Ron, your average Potterhead will still enjoy a diverse range of Harry themed activities, from podcasts to video games, from theme park visits to witty referential t-shirts. They know which Hogwarts house they're in. They probably opted for a Harry Potter face mask and of course they know the names of all the spells. What's more, Potterheads are always delighted to meet each other. When they recognise one another's memorabilia, they will often immediately make friends, compare favourite fan theories and refer to everyone else around them as muggles. Rowling's World has spawned a huge global family connected through a shared story and a common language. With its core texts, its legion of followers and of course its widely worshipped creator, Harry Potter has an awful lot in common with the major world religions. Most of them though don't go quite as far as Cassie and Lewis Byram, a British couple who decided to entirely theme their wedding around Harry Potter. With a bridal bouquet made of intricately folded Potter book pages, Gryffindor and Slytherin high-heeled shoes, and a first dance that was more of a wand duel, the pair decided that the perfect moment to demonstrate their love for the schoolboy wizard was as they publicly demonstrated their commitment to each other. Their unusual day made headlines around the world, but to many Potter heads, the quirky approach to tying the knot will have made perfect sense. And if they do go on to have children together, they've got quite a list of iconic names to choose from. Baby Dumbledore, anyone? So what do you think about their Harry Potter themed wedding? Fun or the wrong moment for a fandom? Are you a Potterhead? If so, what lengths do you go to show your devotion? And if not, what's your equivalent of this? It could be anything from another book fandom to something music or even sport related. In what ways do you think being a diehard fan is a bit like being part of a religion? And how is it different? It could be similar because you might find other people who feel the same way as you do. You might meet up at football games or concerts, but different because these people might be online and you don't see them as regularly. Maybe you don't want others to know too much about it. 
But there is that sense of family being surrounded by people who love the same thing as you do. We're now going to take this opportunity to see what the Bible says. And we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 19. So now you non-Jewish people are not strangers or foreigners, but you are citizens together with God's holy people. You belong to God's family. You believers are like a building that God owns. That building was built on the foundation that the apostles and prophets prepared. Christ Jesus himself is the most important stone in that building. The whole building is joined together in Christ and he makes it grow and become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Christ, you are being built together with his other people. You are being made into a place where God lives through the Spirit. So in this passage, Paul is talking about what it means to be a part of God's global family, fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household in verse 19. This is our hopefully much more profound equivalent of being united by one common interest like Harry Potter, Taylor Swift or Man United. There's a sense that we were once outside of this family, but we've been invited and adopted in and we become a full part, not just citizens, but part of the household. And this is an incredible thing. We're not just God's worshippers, but his children. There's this great big family dynasty stretching out behind us. We are the latest links in a chain that goes back thousands and thousands of years. Through Jesus, we're joined together in this amazing way, which makes us part of something much bigger than ourselves, which the Bible even calls holy. When we're joined together as a family, God actually exists within us, not just in us as individuals, but in our union together. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? So what do you think it means for God to meet with us as a family, not just one-to-one? -one? And what might that look like? We do believe that God meets with us individually. We have our own quiet times where we can talk to God in prayer, have worship. God meeting with us as family might mean having time with God with other people. So learning about God together and growing in faith together. The biggest example of this could be meeting for church on a Sunday, but would also include things like youth group or Bible study. During this time, you can learn about God's word together and experience it growing in your faith at the same time. Just like our earthly families, you might not always agree with each other and the growth could happen at different times and maybe even at different speeds. How do you feel about this idea of being part of God's family? Could you see yourself inviting others to join in? This might make you feel very comforted to know that you're part of one big family. Some people though don't have the best of earthly families and it might be hard for them to understand how God's family can be a great thing. In God's family, we are never alone. We have family members all over the world. We should want to share this feeling with others to invite them to join this family, but maybe we don't know where to start. In this case, it can be as simple as asking them if they'd like to come along to youth group when it starts back up again, or youth fellowship or scripture union in school if there is one. How is being part of God's family different to being part of the Harry Potter or music or sports fan community? And is it better? Being part of God's family will have long lasting effects, not just in this lifetime, but once we have died too. The fan communities, while they might provide a sense of belonging here on earth, they do have an end. It's important to notice that this picture of family is incredibly inclusive. Why do you think that some Christians can feel the urge to say that some people aren't welcome in the family? And have you ever seen that happen? Some people maybe don't want to share their family with others, feel like it's their safe group and it's hard when new people join in. Or occasionally, some feel like others aren't good enough to join. But we know this isn't true. 
God welcomes everyone. No one is perfect and we all make mistakes. And God welcomes and loves us all equally. How do you need to change the way that you think about God, the church and other people after this discussion? Or how has it made you think differently? The theme of this week's session is family. And what does it mean to be part of a family? Families can be something that we're born into or something that we create for ourselves with our close friends. It's also how the church is often described, a family of believers. Family should be where you feel safe, welcomed and completely at home. An important part of family life is sharing meals together, where relationships are built and community grown. Jesus models the importance of eating together in the Bible. He spent so much time eating and drinking with others, he was thought of a glutton and a drunkard at one point. This week's practical challenge is for you to think of ways that you could reach out and build connections with your family and friends and put one of those into practice this week. You do need to make sure that whatever you choose, that you keep everyone safe within the current restrictions. So some ideas are to offer to cook for your family with a parent or guardian permission and have a sit down meal together. You could bake for a neighbour and have a conversation with them when you drop the baking off. And the third suggestion is invite a friend out for ice cream or to play football and to really check in how they are doing. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Please continue in your own thoughts once I am finished. God, thank you so much that we have your family, a family which spans back thousands of generations and will continue on in the future. God, thank you that we have other members of this family all over the world that we have this connection with. Help us to feel welcomed and safe and secure and know that we can ask our friends if they want to join us at any point. God, thank you so much that you love us no matter what. Amen.